Good morning, everyone. This is September's 2024's CAD training. We're going to be covering the topics of alignments and profiles in Civil 3D. I am using 2025 version, so things may look a little bit different than what you're used to seeing, but it's pretty much the same procedures. So first thing we're going to go over is what is an alignment? I mean, this is going to be a very over, uh, an overview of what we're talking, what we alignments can do. And it's going to be a little bit more focused towards how Pentera uses alignments and just our workflow um, in CAD. So alignment is a horizontal linear path that can be created using any combination of lines, polylines, curves, and spirals. Um, once you combine this together, it's viewed as one single object in Civil 3D. It can be used for curb lines, uh, pipe networks, construction baselines. I've used it for grading swales. So there's lots of different things that you can use alignments for. Um, so roadways, railroads. Alignments are the, one of the first things that you can do in a Civil 3D project because it is like a parent object that um, profiles, corridors, and grading can be based off of. All right, so that's what alignment is. We're going to go into CAD and give a little bit of description of how I usually go through and set up an alignment for a project. Okay, hopefully everyone can see that. It might be a little bit light just because of the screen. I will zoom in here. Hopefully everything will look a little better. Okay, so I don't know if you recognize the site. This is the Horizon out in Bowlesburg. Uh, basically, the surface that you see is just an XML file that was brought in from our surveys and LIDAR combinations, uh, the property lines out there, some adjoining properties, things like that. When I'm going and working on road layout, the first thing, or one of the first things I look at is we're, how can we maximize the site? Typically, that means running a road around the outside perimeter of the property, uh, the distance, the minimum distance of what a lot could be, plus half of the right-of-way distance. So in this case, our minimum lot depth was 150 feet, and our cartway, or right-of-way, was 50 feet. So what I usually would do is go around and offset any of the outside property lines 150 feet. So I've done to save a little bit of time and you know movie magic type thing. I have a couple of layers here that's already done. So the red lines show where 150 feet off the property is. It just gives me a rough idea of where the road may or where the lots may back up to the exterior property line. And then after I get that kind of you know, sketched in there, I would then go ahead I would offset that oh, I, on that last one, I would use my chamfer tool, go through, clean up all the corners, see how it looks, and then I would offset that another additional 25 feet for this, so this line should be a rough estimate of where my center line would be of the of the alignment. After I get that uh, figured out, I go in here and I'll take this and I'll start looking at it and say, okay, here's my alignment. It's very rough. I look and see where my tie-in points in. So I have a tie-in point here and a tie-in point here that I need to work with. Let's see if I have a polyline for that. There we go. All right, so I went through, created a polyline for just the center line of the road. Oops, too many letters off. Okay. Once I get that sort of figured out, like I said, I got to look at the tie in points. And let's see. 
and I take those points, I use my fillet tool to go through and put in the minimum radius, that center line that is allowed by the municipality. In this case, we're using 250 feet. And I try to go through and I see where the center line is going to end up being. So as you can see, I, I, I matched the center line of this existing right away here, brought that through. Uh, there is an existing curve here, so I, I mirrored that. And then I just kind of weaved my way through uh, doing chamfers and radiuses or fillets on here. You can see here this corner wasn't going to work, so I just kind of extended that straight through. And I ended up with what I think would be a center line uh, early on in my design process. So once we have that kind of worked out, let's see here, we can get rid of the red lines. We'll keep the white line, that's the center line that I'm, I'm looking at using. Now we get to turn that line into an actual alignment civil 3D object. That's fairly simple to do. We can go up here to alignment, and I use the create alignments from objects. It's going to say, hey, what object do you want to use? Luckily, hey, I got my civil, or I got my polyline right here, my center line. I can select on that. Once I select on it, you can actually click on multiple ones, but in this case, we only need the one. I'm going to right click to approve. Now, this is a very key step. This next question here asks, do you want to reverse the alignment direction? problem with this question is that whenever you click on it, you usually cannot find the arrow or you're zoomed in so that you can select that polyline. You cannot see which way it's actually looking. So I would recommend zooming out so you can see the full polyline before you run this command. Now if you look right down in here, there's one arrow. If I zoom in or zoom out, that arrow disappears and it's lost. So you won't know exactly where it is. So zooming out first really helps the process. This is, but this arrow is already pointing in the way that I want it. So I'm going to accept that. And it comes up with the create alignments from objects dialog box. All this stuff is pretty simple. I like to try to be, um, if it's very early in the process, try to be semi generic, but also uh, put something that you can actually tell what it's going to be. So in this case, I'm going to say it's a proposed center line. And this is the first center line. The type, there's multiple types in this drop down. For the most part, we're using it as a center line, so we can put it as that type. Um, other types are offset, curve return, rail, and miscellaneous. Later on, I'll, hopefully, if I have time, we'll do. A, I'll show you how a miscellaneous comes into play. You can give it a description. Starting point, if you're joining a road that's already existing, you can type that in if you need to change it at all. Uh, site, I usually leave as none at this point. Now, this one here, existing alignment style, we have existing, no display. So we have our basic styles already created in our template that, to choose from. In this case, this is a proposed road center line, so I'm going to use a proposed center line. It automatically shows that the, la the alignment layer will go onto the PRCL layer, which is good by our standards. And our alignment label set is currently set to standard. Now, if we look underneath here, we have other ones available. I'm actually going to use, uh, we'll use proposed center line. I know that that style will show the tick marks for every 50 feet and labels every 100 feet, as well as the geometry points on our line. And that can be helpful when you're first starting out. Now, in this case, I already have the curves. If I didn't put those curves in there already, I could have left this in here and changed this to the default radius. But since I already have the curves in there, I can uncheck that. And we'll go ahead and erase this existing polyline. When I hit OK, it goes through. It converts the polyline into an alignment and places the labels down at all, uh, all the stations and at the geometry points. Now this, right now, we're at 200 scale, so this is a little bit larger than whatever we usually would do. So if I go back to like 50 scale, we can zoom in here and see every 50 feet is a tick mark, every 100 feet is a label. Here's the midpoint of that arc. We also have the point of curvature here, and the point of tangent also labeled, and the station number.
Now, I also do not see any sort of warnings. Usually when you create an alignment and a warning pop-ups, I find that most of the time that is a tangency error. Now, because I know that these curves were created using the, the fillet tool, there won't be any. But sometimes a line, you know, will get skewed or anything like that or not quite be tangent with an arc. And you will see one of the warning symbols show up at that point. You can then go back and try to uh, fix that and move that around so that it is tangent if it needs to be. All right. So pretty simple. Alignments, nice and easy. Goes pretty quick. You just need a polyline if you do that option. There's other options to do uh, alignments. You can do the alignment station tools. It asks for a new, you know, it's the same kind of way. So I can go PR, CL, O2. It's a center line, same kind of settings. Go right down through there. Uh, hit OK. And it gives you a whole toolbar on just laying out your align. So we can even go in here, let's say, uh, with curves. And we'll just say snap somewhere around in here. But you'll see it you don't have a lot of options as far as getting the geometry very correct. So you just want to mess you want to be careful with this. That's why I find using the polyline to do a basic layout is a lot easier to manipulate and a little bit more familiar. So you can see I can just draw around here with the curve. Uh, I could have changed the uh, adjust to the minimum curve at the settings. Um, so there you go. So what we got there. So there's our extra road that we just put in there for our alignment, center line alignment. All right. So delete that one out. I want to also point out we have this one in, over here, but in our tool space, we can go down through here. We can see alignments, and you can see that there's something under the center line alignment and there is our center line alignment you can keep expanding it will give you information about the alignment um, so let's say you can right click on it you can do properties there's a lot of different controls that you can do in this toolbox you can change the style if we didn't want uh, you know everything to be turned on we could do it if it was an existing layout our center line we could change it but we'll leave it at propose at this point Station control, you can go in here. You're able to do uh, manipulations of where the stations start and end. That's useful if you're doing phases on a project, and it's not always uh, convenient to go back and show the entire pro uh, roadway. You've got masking, same kind of thing. Intersections. Here's where you can say lock all your design criteria, things like that. Here's your, now in this case, this road. <laughs> Uh, it was set to design speed of 60 miles hour, which is probably over design for this one. I'm sure you could go in here and most of the time, none of this nearly needs to be tweaked, but uh, it can be if it needs to be. The default settings that we have already in our template um, work fairly well for most of the designs that we do. So that's the really basic part of just alignments. Like I said, it can be used for multiple different things, uh, grading, all sorts of you know manipulation of pipe works. Pipe networks will be another one. I hopefully will get to show you a little bit on a little couple of different tips and tricks on those. Um, but the other thing that you, this is really important to have is so that we can do profiles, and that will help us go and design our grading and our road profile. So right now, that's where we're going to be heading. Okay, so I already have a, let's see. yep, okay, I had an extra file here just in case anything blew up on the first one. Okay, so we got almost exactly the same layout, change the scale to 50, we can see all of our labels are still here, the same alignment, but now we want to see what does the grades, the existing grades do on, along this alignment, and how can we design a profile for a road that runs on those. All right. So we can go right up here to the create design profile. And we're going to create a surface profile. 
that brings up the profile creation box here. So first thing is this shows the alignment that you're creating the profile with. We only have one alignment in this um, project this time, so that's the one we select. Uh, when you, this is where giving descriptive names to your pro or your alignments helps in the future because if you have five different alignments, this allows you to see which alignment you're actually working with. So the first thing you always have to do is make sure you're on the correct alignment. You can do, if you just need to do a small section of alignment, you can do that by changing your, your um, sample of your stations. We're going to do the entire way. Now on our profile, we want to show certain um, elevations for different surfaces. We're going to show this, typically show the existing and the proposed. Even though we don't have really a proposed, our template has it built in, so it's already there to work with. Down here, we can change our uh, how it is displayed. So uh, existing would be shown as existing grade, e.g. style, and our proposed would be shown as final grade style. Now, sometimes we also want to see what is the elevation or show profile elevations at the building setbacks, especially in a residential subdivision like this one. So I will select the existing, and here has a sample offset option. If you check that, it will ask, let me see, I want to do, my roadway is, um, well, my right away is 50 foot, so half of that is 25, and my front yard setback is 20. So in this case, I'm going to be sampling 45 feet. And then make sure you hit the add button. Now that, any, that's only one side. That would be the right side because that's a positive number. If you do a negative, that will be the left side of your alignment. So you need to do a negative 45. So now this is a 45. I can change the style to be existing grade right. And this one is existing grade left or EGL. They're just shortened up there so we don't have as many words. And we're ready to go. We're gonna, we have our existing surface, our soon to be proposed surface, our existing surface to the right, 45, and existing surface to the left, 45 feet. Draw in profile. Again, it's gonna pop up a window here requesting more information about your profile. It has the correct alignment. I typically call this the exact same name as the alignment to try to keep everything um, clear. Uh, in the future, if you have to make more alignments of just smaller sections of the road, you can do that by and then name those uh, profiles. If you have to divide this up into multiple sheets, you can do that by um, using this technique here. In this case, we're going to use left to right profile. We also have the right to left as a uh, style already created. That looks good. Left to right. Hit my next button. It's going to automatically figure out the stations. In this case, we're going from 0, 0 to the end. Same with the, the it's automatically going to figure out the profile height so it fits everything in here. This is useful to use user specified when you have to do smaller sections of the profile. But we're going to leave it at automatic right now. All this information we've already filled out. We don't need to change anything, but again, it gives you the option to go through. You can change styles. You can change how it really is shown. And there's even, um, so for the bands, we are already have this set up. That's our standard style for our band. But we do have to change one thing. We need to change the profile too to be the proposed surface. So profile one is the existing surface. We don't usually do anything for the hatching at this point. Um, some projects might have a use for that, but typically we do not use that. Create a profile. Okay, now in our template, we have our blocks up here. This is at these squares here are at 50 scale. They show how much can be shown on our standard title block, 24 by 36 title block. So I want to go left to right, so I put my profile there and you can see wow okay we're going to need at least 
three sheets to cover all this. You can adjust just by moving. You have your profile. It's all one object. Now, any kind of overlay or polylines that you draw over top of this will not move, or labels that are not intelligent will not move with your profile if you move your profile. So be aware of that. Be careful of that. Um, I know sometimes it's easier to label things just with, you know, M leaders or something like that. Those will not move if you, if for some reason this profile would. Let's zoom in down here on the band. You'll notice also that, hey, the existing surface number showed up, but the proposed surface did not. That's because the template does not have any data um, associated to the proposed surface at this time. And that's where our next goal is going to be. We're going to look in, at designing a centerline vertical alignment on this profile. Uh, so our center line existing is this white line here, white dash line. Our offset negative 45 to the left is the magenta. So that should show up when we plot it slightly lighter or thinner. And our profile 45 feet offset from the center line to the right is red. And that shows up just a little bit darker than magenta. So that's how we um, delineate and separate our different profiles. But you can see uh, they're fairly, there's no real big elevation changes between that 45 feet. Uh, they usually stay pretty close to what the center line is. That's what you, you want to look, kind of look like. Let's see if it's, a, that means the cross-sectional slope along the alignment is fairly um, even, 45 feet, both directions of the road. We know that this is the high side, and this is the low side. All right. So now we're ready to start designing our centerline profile uh, vertical alignment. We go back up to the profile option, and this time, instead of doing the create surface profile, we're going to use the next one down called the profile creation tools. Click on that. It's going to ask you what profile view you want to use and you can click anywhere in, on the gray grid. So here we go. We see that, that yes, that is our alignment. We're going to name this PRCL01. Again, I try to keep everything similar if they're all in one profile view. We could put a description in. Here's our styles. We're going to be doing a finished grade. So we want to draw that. And we want to change our style to a complete label set. And hit OK. That brings up our profile layout tools. Gives us a whole bunch of tools across here. I'm going to just focus on the ones that uh, I found that I use the most um, and give you a little bit of demonstration of how I go about laying out the roadway. Um, sometimes I'll draw polylines to do this. Other times I'll just use these tools straight to go from there. So the first drop down here we have is our draw tangents. I usually draw tangents first and add my curves later. That way I can be a little bit more specific. I can move things around before actually adding curves in. So let's go with that. Okay, specify the start point. So I know somewhere over here of my existing road, if I was really preparing, I would find the exact point of my edge of pavement and go from there. In this case, I'm just going to take somewhere around in there and extend out trying to keep the similar slope than what the existing road that I'm tying into already has. When I'm drawing my center line with just tangents, I also want to keep in mind that when I add arcs or vertical curves, those will be cutting out or adding in. Let me show you here. So I'll go way out here. That looks like it's way too far above the existing grade. But then I'll come back down and I'm like I said, I'm going to really exaggerate this one. So it's going to go low. Now we got a bump. We're just going to zoom out because I'm going to do this fairly quickly. I'm going to go, this is going to be a high point, so I'm going to cut that in half way down. Now I know that there is a waterway through here, so I might keep that above so that we can get any kind of um, store pipes enough clearance to go underneath. 
then I can go somewhere around in here. And again, what I look at is just trying to balance the cut and the fill above and below the proposed white center line there. So we can have a fairly long slope here. Yeah, I'm just going to go fully down. Yeah. Like that. As we zoom in, we can kind of see, oh, we got a, here looks like a fairly defined cross slope of the road. So I can actually use my snaps, snap right onto that endpoint. Once I get the whole way through, I can right click to accept and it will go through. It puts it in. What you'll notice is it put in my slopes for each tangent. So I can see what I, how I did. I can go back now and do a fairly quick look through and see, okay, is there any slopes that I need to really adjust? Like over here, 1.27, we usually do a 2% minimum, but in this case, since we are tying out of an existing road, we kind of want to expand and keep maintain that uh, slope for a little bit of distance. And it, same thing on this other end. We're coming out of an existing that seems to maintain that slope. It's one and a half. We're okay there. All right, so now we we make our adjustments. We look at it a little bit. We say, okay, that looks good. That looks bad. Boy, this is, that's a lot of fill right in there. Maybe I do want to change that. I can select the, the vertical alignment, and you'll see that it has three different um, grips down here. This one can move the whole, PI, the whole point up and down vertically. This one will slide and keeping this tangent the same slope while changing this one and vice versa. So in this case, I want to, let me see, what do we want to do? I don't want to have this much cut. So let's see if I raise this up. Didn't really fix my cut there at all, but now if I take this grip and slide it down, notice how it keeps the 8.05% 8, and changes the other one. So we'll put this down around in here. So that lowered the slope to 6.27. And we have more cut here. But now we can take that cut and, and spill it over to there. Now, what is this percent here? That's 2%. So we probably don't want to change that too much. So let's see what happens if we slide this even farther. It steepens up this grade to almost seven. And we can start messing around. You can do this for quite some time, really. I mean, you can get pretty detailed in here. Let's see. A lot of fiddling around. But you can get it pretty close just by going through, um, getting something like that. This is going to be interesting here. <laughs> All right, so let's get some vertical curves in here. Oh, let me let me show you. If you don't like using the grips and you or you want to be, say, I really need a precise slope, you can do that also. You can always select the green circle that will open the profile grid view, which is on my other screen here. Let me slide that over, and that gives you the elevation and all of the information. So let's say, okay, that nine point five seven. I need that to be a, uh, what was it? Yeah, negative 9.5. You can type that in. It will adjust the adjacent. Uh, I usually try to change the grade out if possible. So that means um, you can see the grade in is 1.27. That's this one. So I'm actually changing this slope here. I know I got, let's see. There we go. That helps. That changes this one to be 9.5. So let's say, okay. If you, if you, you know, some people get pretty particular on, you know, slopes, or if you're really close to the maximum slope allowed by the township, let's say 8% is the maximum slope. Okay, that's going to cause a little bit of problems. Then I can type like that, and we can just work our way right through and make sure that we don't have anything. You know, okay, some people might be like, oh, I'd rather have a negative 2 rather than 2.04. It really doesn't make a difference. You can go through there and 
clean up your if you like having zeros at the end of your slopes you can't it hopefully shouldn't make a difference it made to a contractor depending on who the contractor is so let me see let's let's move this up oh, a little too far actually and you can see how you can just grip it and I wanted to keep this at one and a half because that's already fairly flat but the existing grades already that way so you can you can get in here and mess around quite a bit to adjust and it, it updates automatically right away so we're gonna not fiddle with that anymore you can get it as close you want with grips or you can type it in and then you have to go back through and adjust other things so once you're happy with those tangents close that window now we can start putting in vertical curves. Vertical curve, if you're adding it to an existing uh, vertical alignment, can be done by hitting this drop down on the toolbar. I typically use the free vertical curve parabola tool because a lot of the times we design to a k value. Uh, the k value is a equation. It's the length of the curve divided by the absolute value of the grades going in and out of that um, curve. So it helps to allow for um, sight distance over curves or on sags. So on this one here, we have a crest of a hill. Typical uh, K value for the crest of the hill should be uh, 12. So this is another thing that's really typical here. We have to be careful with. It says select your first entity. You want to take, make sure your snaps are turned off. If you used any kind of polylines to lay out your, your vertical line at first, you need to get those turned off so you, you, because this tool will not select anything unless it's right on top of it. Now it's going to ask for the next entity. All right. And now first thing it's going to ask, or if we look down at the command line, make sure and see what value it's actually actually asking for. In this case, it is looking for the K value already. Like I said, for, for a crest, that's 12. So I can type that in. And you can see it puts that curve right in there. Our next, then it's, you can just go right down the line. So we have a first exit. This is a sag, so that would be a 26k value minimum. Uh-oh, something went wrong. It says uh, cannot be no solution found. So that means that the length of the curb would have to be longer than what's allowed on these tangents because of the, it's the, being divided by the absolute value. So in this case, there's what a 14, 15 um, absolute value. So this is too too much. So I can escape out of that command. It leaves my first one. You'll notice it adds the um, all the stationing information, where the curve begins of the vertical curve, the elevation of the vertical curve, where it ends. It gives you the K value. All that information, very important stuff to have once we get going with this. So now i got to figure out a way to either increase the length of my tangents going into the curve or lessen the absolute value of uh, the two um, slopes going into that. So I can do multiple things here. Okay, in this case, I'm going to grab this grip. I'm going to keep my 1.27%, and I can pull this way back, try to get it closer to the existing. See how that is a lot closer now to the existing grade. That lowered this to 6.9%. So we might be able to even do better than that. What if we pull this up some using that middle point it will only let you move it so far before if this curve fails it won't let you go any farther so now I got this in that area now we have a slope of negative 5.83 and an outward slope of 4.14 let's see if that is a good enough to our vertical curve to fit first entity next entity k value of 26 so there we go that one it works now because we lengthened the tangents and we lessened the absolute value between the two slopes now we can go to the next one this one's a 12 that one just fits in there 26 
six. Oops, again, that one won't work. So how do we go about getting that one fixed? Oh, actually it did work. I thought it said it, no solution found. Oh, okay. So you'll notice up here, it didn't work. It took the, the, best, cur the best K value that it could, 16.88, which is not an acceptable value. Uh, so what we need to do is again, let's uh, adjust these grips. Maybe it lengthen that, maybe raise it up a little bit, something like that. All of this is intelligent. It keeps and adjusts everything before. So now let's say, okay, well, that's, that's all right. It's not too bad, but now we need to look at this and see if we can get this changed K value to the 26 that's required. So I can go open up my chart editor. Uh, let me see. And that would be K value of 16. Let me see if I can find that in here. Okay, it's a sag length. There it is. So we want that to be a 26. Okay, so just moving that center line vertical alignment a little bit allowed us to change it to be 26. Up here, you can see it changed the labels, it adjusted the curve. We're quite a bit higher than the existing grade, but this is a drainage way, so we do need some room to get a pipe in through here anyway. So this might be fine with the final design. Again, these are all things that you can go through pretty quickly on your first go through and um, make adjustments later on. You know, right now, this is more getting an idea of what could work. Okay, so got another crest, which is a 12K. Down here's a sag, so 26. Make sure you keep track. Now, see, I thought I hit it, but that one is, I did I missed that one. Okay. Ooh. All right, so I must have missed that one. Missed pick. There we go. There. Make sure it's looking for K value. I need to move. And we're good. We got it the whole way out through. That last one fit in there. And we have a long tangent at one and a half at the end. So now you can kind of go back through, adjust things, use the grips, slide things around. Keep, make sure that all your slopes stay at the minimum that you want to design to. Uh, you can actually grab this midpoint here and this 2%, you can slide that down as a whole. Notice it keeps it at 2%. It adjusts both the curves in and out, vertical curves in and out. Um, this, this is a really tight curve. I could actually take this and slide this down. Let's see. Maybe raise that up a little bit. It's not a very big curve. Either way we do. So how about like that? So basically, once you get this in, you can go through, adjust either with grips or with your chart here, changing the values in here. Um, it's pretty simple. It can be frustrating at some point if you cannot get the vertical curve to fit in there. You just kind of have to know some of the little uh, tips and tricks, the little tweaks that you can do to get it to work. Like this one, we're way too low on that. So what can we do? We can probably take this, bring that up. Oh no, we don't want to do that. I don't think you can do undo. So there's a good thing. Pay attention to that. Undo does not work uh, completely on that situation. But now you can see, now I'm at 1.84. Maybe what we need is an extra PVI in here. We can go and select add a PVI. Let's say we put this down here. Notice how it automatically went right through, updated the labels, added that extra in there. Now we will still need a vertical curve for that, but then you can still adjust. Let's say we, now we can really pull this up you know, a little bit so we can get that going. So it's a lot of, it can be a lot of fiddling around 
trying to see how see what works best for your site um, but that is a very it's important to know how to do this because it's this building block for a lot of other um, grading corridors just getting an idea of how how everything will work we'll look at our storm networks our sanitary sewer networks based off of all this so having a good fundamental background on the alignment and and how to adjust the profile is important to the overall design in many different um, uh, ways it's, it's, so like I said you could you can go and move around things a lot but all this is nice because it is grips together and it's one object that allows you to make a lot of changes without having to keep redrawing and redrawing now if you're still a little bit old school you can that's what this chart right here was used for these show the different slopes these are just polylines you could take you know copy this line down you want a three percent slope you take that and you put it down here and then there you go there's your three percent slope and you could do you could polyline layout the whole way and then you could trace over it with a profile it, either way is fine uh, it's just whatever you're most familiar with um, but having this profile in here intelligent object is key for a lot of labeling uh, it saves a lot of time especially on this next section all right so let me actually let me show you something here real quick so we can we can see that this is way too big to fit on one sheet so we can look at this we can say okay we can go from station zero up to station 1500 all right so you would actually have to create a new profile so close your tools profile create surface profile you would have to go through and recreate a lot of that um, it's not too hard but oh actually it already has the surfaces associated but what you could do is say okay I only want to do 1500 all right, so now we got a 0 to 1500. Draw and profile. Um, this would be, you know, PR CL01. Zero to, you know, it could be just be descriptive so that anybody could look at it and say, oh, that's what's going on there. Because later on, you'll have to pick it out from a list possibly and it's a lot easier to pick it out from the list when you have a descriptive name than if you just have uh, something else generic in there okay so pretty much the same configuration click there oh no that did not work the way i wanted it to let's see if we can change that here's something that's very key it took me an awfully long time to really kind of figure this part out. When you select on a profile and you right click, there's profile view properties and there's edit profile view style. For the most part, if you want to change what is being shown on the profile, you would use the profile view properties. If you want to change how the profile looks, you would change the style. Be very careful changing the styles because if you have multiple profiles in your drawing it will change all profiles that have the same style please be aware of that we've run into this issue in the past where um, we decided that one profile need to be left to right and the next one need to be right to left and we changed the style rather than create a new style or um, specifically for the right to left and when we changed it it changed all profiles in the drawing that use that same style so please be aware be careful if you're changing a profile uh, direction or how you want it to look create a new style for that profile it will save you a lot of headaches in the long run okay so I want to only show a certain thing on this one so we can go in here here we go so what did I do wrong I must have I did that before right that's 
All right. So now we can see we got station zero, station 1,500. Fits just inside our 24 by 36 standard title block. And we, if we needed to break this apart, we could do the next one, the next one, the next one. You'll notice that if you click on here, it only shows you part of it, but also selects it on the full run. So if you are doing a long road like this one, I recommend drawing it and profile doing most of the design on the long one. It will change automatically in this shorter version. So if I take this point right here, let's see if I can zoom on that. Take that and I want to lower it, it lowered down here. This one essentially is only being used for um, our sheets. But what you also notice is this one doesn't have labels already in it. So might have to duplicate labeling, but as far as design, it's easier to design the full length and then have it broken apart into smaller sections. Um, let me see. Grab this right here. Selected it, or right clicked, add labels or edit labels. Where is it? Yeah, so right now it doesn't have any of the labels on here. We can go in there and say, hey, change that horizontal and now those are what we want okay opening up my annotations we can go down here to profile view there we go we can change different things in here station elevation steps projections all those kind of things can be added in there so do keep in mind that you have to add the labels separately. It, it's kind of a pain in the butt, but you know, it, it's still overall, it's a lot easier than having the design down here and then having this one up here have to change in two different places. All right, I hope that makes some sense. Hope that, you know, semi clear. Um, you need to have the profile in order to do corridors. So, I know we've discussed corridors in the past. You need, yeah, essentially what you need is an existing surface to start. Then you need a, an alignment to show where you're kind of traveling, your path. Then you can create a vertical profile or, you know, profile that, that existing surface. Then you can design a proposed horizontal or vertical profile, which is our design road center line, the blue line. And then once you have that, you can, well, <laughs> no, not once you have that. Then you also need your assemblies, which we have some pre-made in our template. And you can assign those assemblies to your vertical alignment to create a corridor. And then that corridor can create a surface and that surface can then tie off to your existing surface. And then you can add your storm pipe network or sanitary sewer pipe network. So they all kind of stack on top of each other. One of them needs the one, the previous information if it wants to be smart and react to all the changes. Uh, so that is a road profile. I know that's a lot of information that I did it pretty quickly. The more you do this technique for large su residential subdivisions, the more you'll get, get the hang of it. Um, and you can see some of the other benefits of how it works and how it can be applied to other situations. Uh, let me see. Okay, so I have one last, uh, oh, actually I don't. It's almost 11.30. Does anybody have any questions on what we covered so far here? Um, I think we're gonna probably end up stopping with this again it's a lot of information it, but it's key to know how to do this so that you can uh, quickly um, see or change modify your design without having to do a lot of the repetitious work over and over and over again of just manual drafting okay I don't see any questions I hope if you do have any questions later on please come and see me, ask questions. We will have the video up on our YouTube 
when it's ready. And also there is sample um, sample files and also uh, this uh, slide presentation is also there so you can go and find additional information. And there's definitely additional resources if you have time and you want to learn more about this or any other topic, Autodesk has a very good uh, online tutorial system. Uh, and I would recommend going and looking through that. It breaks it down step by step by step. And it's, it's, it's now it's generic. It's not tailored to how we have it for our standards, but it gives you a good idea of how to work through the process. All right, that's all I have for today. I hope everyone have a great week and we'll see you next month.